Hey everyone, how's it going? Sam here. In this tutorial, I want to show you how to use the segments panel of the Lodi Files workflow. Inside of the segments panel, you can define different segments, so different parts of your animation, so that it's easier for handoff to understand where the different parts of the animations are, and then play these different parts depending on events happening inside of your application. So in today's tutorial, we're going to create the markers inside of After Effects, load it up onto Workflow, and then create a pizza ordering app where we can control the various parts of the animation and when to display them. Let's get started. So here we are inside of After Effects and I've got the pizza animation I just showed you and we've got about five different parts to the animation I want to hand off. So let's go ahead and start defining our markers so that we know the various parts of animation. So this first part is the preparation of the pizza. So over here on the right, I'm going to click on add a new marker. I'm going to open it up and I'm going to give it a name in between quotation marks and I'm going to call it prep. The second thing you have to do is give it a duration. Um, what I like to do is just give it a one second duration and then go in my timeline, find out the frame I want for the end frame and just drag the marker up. It's a bit easier. So there you go. You've now defined your first marker. Let's go ahead and do the other ones. So I'm going to drop, I'm going to drop, sorry, another marker and give it a name. I do want to point out quickly that the spelling of these markers is actually important. Otherwise it won't work. So you need to be careful to open up the curly braces, add a name and its value in between double quotes. Uh, otherwise this will not work. There we go, our pizza flies off. So let's end the frame there. Drop another one. Drop another marker. I'm going to call this one transition. And give it one second again. So the pizza comes back up and he gets on his little legs. Okay, so just before he starts walking, that's our transition. And then we have the delivering pizza animation. So let's go ahead, drop another marker. One second. name, delivering. There we go, he was running off. And then he's done his little run. And then delivered. So pretty straightforward, but having the segments inside of works for workflow allows you to, well, allows the person integrating the animation to not have to open up the After Effects file and go over all these values. Um, so it just helps the developers speed up their workflow. So let's just add one second and edit to the end. So there we go, we've defined all our markers. If you go ahead and render this with the Lodi files plugin, upload it to workflow, uh, the markers will be included, and we can then start integrating this. So I'm going to go upload this to workflow and I will see you there. So heading back into workflow, I'm going to quickly define my different segments I've set up in the file so that the person integrating this is aware of them. So my first segment was called prep. So I'm going to define that. 
and it was frame zero to frame 57. So let's do that, add another one. That's about 60 to 60 to 130. Oops. 130 and then we've got, ooh, forgot to give it a name, packing. And then we've got transition one where the pizza comes up. So frame 130 and gets his little legs. So 130 to 170. And then delivering. So let's go to frame. 130 or 170 sorry that's where the end was 170 he's running 224 224 and delivered 224 until the end Okay, great. So we've defined all our segments. When we go and hand this off to the developer, they now know that there are all these different parts of the animation to play depending on the different state of the pizza and how the delivery is going. So now I'm going to head into my HTML file, my JavaScript file, and show you how to implement these different states on the web using the Lolly player and Lottie Interactivity. Let's get started. Okay, so here I am inside of my web project and it's pretty boilerplate for the moment. Uh, all I've done is added the script source for the Lottie player as well as Lottie Interactivity. The repositories for these two libraries you can find in the description where you can find out more about the things these uh, libraries can do, uh, especially Lottie Interactivity. There's a lot of different uh, interactions possible with this library. So I highly recommend you check out the, doc, uh, the documentation for these libraries and the player. Um, but yeah, uh, that's the script source. Then we've got the body. We've got a container class with just some like simple styling. Um, so yeah, pretty normal HTML stuff for the moment. Uh, so inside of this container, we're gonna go ahead and define our Lottie player to start off with. So Lottie player, uh, we need the source. So here I'm pasting in the link of my pizza animation. Uh, I'm gonna give it autoplay and loop. And if you're not sure where to find your animations URL, you can go into workflow, go into handoff and embed and grab your asset link here. So let's go ahead and see if the animation's working okay. I've added autoplay and loop, so it should be good. And if we refresh the page, the animation is auto-playing and looping. Let's remove this and add an ID, Lottie player. And I'm going to add a button. And on click, uh, what should we call it? Next interaction. So that's going to call the next interaction function, which will allow us to go through the different steps of our animation. Um, so yeah, let's code that up. So now we um, are gonna go into our scripts folder, either create or find the index.js file and make sure to include it at the bottom of your body tag so that it's actually loaded up. So here inside of index.js, we've got uh, the player, we need a reference to that, and our button is optional, I'm gonna leave it. Um, so yeah, so now we've got the player and the button. So let's go ahead and define the different parts of our animation that we want to loop through. So I'm going to create a variable, uh, Lottie Interactivity, li equals Lottie interactivity create. And then we're going to pass an object 
So we can pass in the ID of our player. So here it's Lottie player. Then because we're going to be chaining interactions, we're going to set the mode to chain. And now we can go ahead and define our actions. So here it's an array and we're going to pass it objects. But before that, because I want to actually control the interaction and change its steps uh, based on the button click, I am actually going to do a function called next interaction. And I'm just going to call li dot next interaction. So we're going to grab our Lottie interactivity object and just call next interaction. You can define how to transition um, between the different segments inside of the actions, but I want to show how you can do it outside of this Lottie interactivity create. For example, if you're using an API because it's a pizza delivery service, um, then when your API um, would return a specific, specific value, whether the pizza is in a new state, then you would call uh, next interaction. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and start using our segments inside of the animation. So if we head back to workflow, head into our segments, our first segment is called prep. So let's go ahead and integrate that. So I'm going to call the state. I want it to, uh, let's do a loop. And the frames, I can now use prep instead of, um, instead of, for example, doing zero to 50, something like that, I can just simply use prep. And if the animation is changed, uh, as long as the mark is still there, this will still work. So I don't have to go ahead and update my code. So that's pretty cool. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and do my second one. So we had packing, we had transition one, delivered, delivering and delivered. So let's go ahead and copy this. Transition one. Delivering and delivered. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. And we need to give some text to our button. And let's just give it some styling. There we go. So now our pizza is looping in the preparation phase. And if we click the press me button, it goes to the second part of the pizza being prepared and uh, packed. We then have the transition, delivering and delivered. Okay, so the states and the segments are working fine. We can go ahead and use Lottie Interactivity to start uh, changing up how we want to change this animation. So first of all, I'm noticing this last part um, it doesn't need to loop. We only need to see it once. Um, so I'm just going to change the state to autoplay so that now if we go through them, there we go. It plays once and it opens up and we know that our pizza has been delivered. Uh, what's next? Um, okay. Maybe we could do reset true okay so now that we did reset if we press it again it'll go back to the beginning and okay so this transition one um what needs to happen is we need it to autoplay and then when it's finished you know standing up and starting to run 
uh, we want it to go to the next segment, which is uh, the running part. So here I can define on complete. I can define transition, sorry. Transition, transition, and then it's on complete. So when this segment finishes playing, it'll go to the delivering phase. There we go, prepping, packing. There we go, it's transitioned nicely into the running segment and then delivered. So in this tutorial, we covered how to define markers inside of After Effects, how to set them up inside of Workflow for developer handoff, and then integrated them into a web app. The links for the Lottie Player and Lottie Interactivity will be in the description. I hope this helps you out. And I will see you in the next one. Cheers.